It's time for Boating Safety Tips, presented by Amron in partnership with Surdock Yamaha and the Missouri Highway Patrol. Here's Lake TV's Deborah Wolf. I am joined by Corporal Mosher of the Missouri Highway Patrol, and today we're going to talk about, let's talk about the plowing problem that we have at the Lake of the Ozarks. We welcome boats of all sizes and boaters that enjoy all types of boating, but sometimes when boats plow for too long, it really does become an issue that affects the shoreline and docks. It does. It, it not only affects the shoreline and the docks, but it's a safety issue. The uh, handling characteristics of your boat really, really inhibited when you're at plow. It just doesn't turn as well, it doesn't react as well to the throttle, and it also creates some wakes that are pretty dangerous for some of the smaller boats behind you. Why Why is it that people plow like that? Do, are they just not aware of how to effectively operate the boat? Is it showmanship? What do you think the common reason is? I think a lot of it is people trying to push the capacity of their boat. Um, some of our smaller boats with single engines and you've got a big crowd down at the lake for the day. Um, you put, you know, you maximize that out. You've got eight or ten people in a 22 or 24 foot sure. boat. Um, it's just not going to get on plane. Um, and it's, it's it maybe wide open throttle and you may have it planed all the way in, but it's, it's just beyond mechanically what that boat can do. Um, also with some of the larger boats, some of your 50s and 45, 50, 55 foot boats, um, they're never going to get on plane either. Okay. Um, and those, they're just not designed the way Weight-wise, um, they call them a planing haul, but it's it's not going to plane. It's going to be it's going to be set at that plow. So, what's the solution to that? Um, just really be aware of what your boat can do and can't do, and how to operate it safely. Okay. So, when you are at a plow, which is and when we talk about plow, so your your boat is level, you know, you're at idle, and then you apply the throttle, and most of the boats will lift up unless their haul is pretty stuffed. But uh, most boats are going to lift up. And then eventually you're going to plane that out and it's going to come up on speed and you can trim your motors out and you're going to be operating at a level down the lake. So then your boat's more efficient, uh, your motor's more efficient, you're, you're turning and handling, your vision you can see much better. Um, it's really how the boat was designed to be operated is, is up on plane. Uh -huh, right. Um, some people just don't get there, whether they're, they're worried about applying too much throttle, uh, whether the boat can't get there, um, whether there are a variety of reasons, or if it's so rough you don't want it up on plane. Uh -huh. Um, a lot of different reasons, but I think most of the time it's just people not really understanding what the benefits are of getting that boat up, not right. only for them as a boat operator, but for the property owners right. and for the other boats that are out on the lake trying to deal with those wakes. Now, there's one group of water lovers here that enjoys the lake that they actually very much enjoy big wakes, and you would prefer that they steer clear of them, and that's the PwC <laughs> operators. No, th those are designed to be ridden that way. Um, I, I love personal watercraft operators. I love personal watercraft. I've had several, but they're really designed for that. Um, where we run into trouble is when they're too close to the boats and they're really not aware of all the boats that are around them. So like everything else, there's a time and a place when that activity is Man, it's encouraged, it's fun to watch, it's fun to do, but there's also a time and a place when you're in a heavily congested area or if you're too close. There, there are legal distances that you have to stay away from each boat. Um, all personal watercraft have to stay 50 feet away from each other at all time and all boats. So all boats, all personal watercraft, everybody. Um, and if they're gonna cross the wake of a boat and become airborne, they have to be 100 feet behind that boat. So even at those distances, um, that's still pretty close. Yeah. That's still pretty close. Yeah, it feels close. I'll yeah. tell you, when you're in a boat and they're jumping them, it feels very close. It really does. And it, it's hard to have a nice vision field mm -hmm. when you're jumping them right at the 100 feet because if someone has the same idea coming on the other side, um, we have worked those collisions back there like that before. Yeah. Uh, you also bring up a good point about when when boats encounter each other on the water, what is the proper rules and the safest way to do that? It would be awesome if everybody understood um, some of the uh, suggestions and some of the time-tested navigational um, suggestions. So two boats meet head on, everybody stays to the right. Um, if you're crossing the path of a boat, the boat on the right has right away and the other boat gives way. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of understood old time navigational rules at play. Missouri statute though doesn't incorporate those type of the navigational rules uh, into our statute. Ultimately in Missouri, it's every boat operator's responsibility to avoid a collision. So if you've got two boats meeting head on, Man, in a perfect world, everybody right. would stay to the right and pass safely. 
Um, but sometimes there's situations that you can't stay to the right. Sometimes there's boats coming on the right side um, and, and you just can't do that safely. Uh, so at those times we want people to just throttle back and idle down and slow down and, and make that situation safe. If all um, else fails, slow down. Also. You can always slow down. Push, always slow down. Um, you know, we've had people cut right next to docks at really high speeds and you pull them over like, what, what were you thinking? And they're like, well, I wanted to avoid that boat. But in doing so, you created another hazard by buzzing that dock. Right. So uh, in that situation, just man, slow down, assess that situation. <laughs> slow down. Corporal Mosher, we always appreciate chatting with you and learning more about so boat safety on the Lake of the Ozarks. Thank you. Thank we appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Glad to have you here. We also want to thank our sponsors, Sir Dike Yamaha, Amherst, Missouri, the Missouri Highway Patrol, and of course, brought to you by Lake TV. Once again, I'm Deborah Wolf. Be sure to stay tuned to Lake TV for all the info you need to have the time of your life at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks.